But now it's 9.30, which can only mean it's not the nine o'clock news. Good thanks. Oh, thanks very much. God's sake, are you trying to embarrass me or what? There are some very influential people in here. Society people, you don't catch them trying to drink with a bloody beer mat on the end of their glass. Just try and act sophisticated, even if you're not. to you and welcome to Question Time. <laughs> and with me here tonight, I have a very distinguished panel. First of all, a man widely tipped by many to be a future Prime Minister of England, Lord Carrington. Good evening. Next to him, the Liberal MP for, <laughs> for Land's End South, Rudolph B. And <laughs> to my left, and indeed, to everybody's left, the sylph-like figure of Francis Morel. Good evening. And lastly, a man who I'm told is very popular throughout the country, but I personally can't abide him, Clive Jenkins. Hello. Could we have the first question, please? In view of the fact that the Soviet Union has just launched 50,000 megatons of nuclear warheads against Britain... Yes, yes. Uh, ..which will be arriving in approximately four and a half minutes, <laughs> uh, what are the panel's views on Britain's future as a world power? <laughs> yes, well, there we have it, a very topical question from Mrs Johnson there. 50,000 megatons are on their way and we're all going to die very shortly. <laughs> Lord Carrington. Well... Leaving the Holocaust aside for a few minutes. <laughs> I'm, sorry, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm afraid we can't do no, that. No, no, let me finish. Time. Now, let me finish. As I've said before, you have to view this kind of thing in global terms. It would be very easy for me to sit here and blame a President... Uh, President... Uh, President... Uh, for everything, and I'm sure that would, that would give you something to talk about on your programme. But you know, Great Britain is not an island. Yes, well, I'm afraid it is, no, actually, Peter. No, and, we, and we have to weigh up the pros and cons and get them to balance. And I would say that on balance, the world is about to be devastated <laughs> by nuclear, by nuclear, by nuclear... Uh, uh, Holocaust? Uh, Holocaust, Holocaust yeah. earlier. Now, some people might think that's a bad thing. Others might quite like the idea, I don't know. Don't come to me asking for a short answer to that one. Yes, well, I wish I never had, in fact. <laughs> because we haven't got much time, I'd like to go over to Rudolph B. Now, Rudolph. Help! Help! We're all going to die! Yes, well, short and to the point, as usual. <laughs> uh, Francis Morel. Well, I'm amazed. I mean, we're sitting here talking about a nuclear holocaust, <laughs> casually discussing the destruction of the entire planet, and ignoring the major issue. <laughs> which is the appalling record of this Conservative government. 
And the real tragedy here is that three million people will die unemployed. <laughs> and here, I would like to drone on about Tory economic policy insofar as it relates to everything yes, else yes, I've well, been saying. Yes, well, thank you, Francis, relevant as ever. <laughs> and, uh, uh, and now, Clive Jenkins, the Holocaust. Uh, Robin. Uh, my member. Yes, thank you very much, Clive. Right no, sorry. I will have my say. Yes, if you must. I'd At a go. moment like this, I wonder what Nye Bevan would have done. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure he would have shot in his pants. <laughs> <laughs> the point is that while we are sitting here in this comfortable studio, the average trade unionist is down a coal mine. Yes, well, I don't know about you, Clive, but that's precisely where I'd like to be right now. <laughs> well, uh, 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 another question. Uh, uh, Mrs. Bentos of Cheltenham? Yes. If the panel only had 30 seconds left to live, who would the panel most like to have sexual intercourse with? <laughs> well, there we are, as I said. Time for, <laughs> time for a quick one, Francis. <laughs> I'm sorry for disturbing your program. All the crazy stuff will be back in a short while. But I must speak with you urgently. My name is Zack. I come from another planet. It is a very different planet to this one. We have no death, no gravity, and a different shaped gear stick on the mini metro. <laughs> Also, we have a different language. The reason I am able to speak to you is that this small podule simultaneously translates what you keep it switched on. I have come on an important mission, on an important mission to tire to talk to you about the fact that you don't want to know. I'm afraid my machine is The machine will work now. My apologies. The earth battery I bought seems to be malfunctioning. There may not be much time. I came here secretly and against the express wishes of the Galactic Council to warn you. To warn you of four courses of action you must take to avoid the imminent destruction of your civilization. Mark them well. Secondly, die schreckliche Kartoffelkopf. Anthony Wedgwood she did it carted off to the funny farm at once. <laughs> Thirdly, Chukabadi did it at the Barbican Centre within five years. And fourthly, beware the one who calls himself Terry Wilgan. He is a Zillon from the planet Tharg and cannot be trusted. hell. and an amazing new device designed to help keep Britain tidy went on show today. It's a dog that sweeps up its own mess. <laughs> American tycoon Mr John DeLorean has admitted that prospective customers lost interest in his sports car when they found out what was under the stainless steel body. <laughs> Bob's got it. Bob! Yes, Bob? Have you got Bob's talk wrench? 
No, Bob, I haven't. Hasn't Bob got it? No, Bob, I haven't. Oh, hang on, hang on. No, Bob's got it. Bob! Yes, yes Bob. Bob? Oh, Bob says you got the talk around. No, oh, Bob. Bob! Oh, sorry, Bob. Uh, Bob's got it. Bob! Yes, Bob! <laughs> no, not you, Bob. Bob! Bob, have you got Bob's talk wrench? Yes, yes. No, Bob! Oh, Bob must have it. Bob! Oh, look, no, Bob, Bob, you says... said you had it down here. Bob, 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 I believe you've been shot with this. What a dreadful lie! How dare you! Yeah, it's just a mouthful. <laughs> well, Mr. Glossop, I have some very bad news for you, I'm afraid. Oh, really? Yes, the tests came back from the laboratory, and you have the highest level of cholesterol they've ever seen. Oh. This may sound a bit premature, but when you die, would you mind leaving your body to me? Well, if I can be of some use afterwards. For research purposes, I suppose. No. I want to hang you up in the garden so the blue tits can peck at you. <laughs> Ruffage K, the whole wheat breakfast. Absolutely nothing taken away and nothing added. It's just bursting with natural goodness. Everything you'd expect to find in a breakfast that has been left out in the rain for a year until the wheat was endowed with a thick crustacean of muck. Nature's muck brimming with the parts of weasels that didn't adhere to the blades of the combine harvester. And creepy crawlies, plague-carrying insects who dribble over it. Trampled by B.O.-ridden incontinent farmers. It's all natural. In fact, it's the bag of nature. Ruffage K, the bag of nature. Morning, son. Morning, John. Good morning, my parents. Did you have a good day yesterday? I did have a good day yesterday. Did you win your tournament, son? I did win my tournament. Did you get fined again? I did get fined again. <laughs> Don't slurp your orange juice. What did you say? <laughs> I told you before not to slurp your orange juice. You cannot be serious! <laughs> you cannot be serious! I did not slurp my orange juice! I did not slurp my drink! Did I slurp my drink? Did you hear a sound? Did you hear a sound? Tell me! I heard a slurping sound. Jesus Christ, woman! You cannot be serious! I want to bring in Dad. I want to bring in Dad. 
bring it down. I want to hear what Dad has to say. Let's bring it down. Let's hear what Dad has to say. Did you hear a sound, Patrick? The drink was slurped. Jesus Christ! <laughs> Why am I surrounded by incompetence? Why is everyone against me? John. Why don't you calm down, come and finish your breakfast? <laughs> this egg is runny. I must have my eggs boiled for six minutes. How long was this egg cooked? I boiled it for six minutes. You did not boil it for six minutes! <laughs> Oh, yes, I did. You did Is this your card? Is this your running? Is this your card? Is this your running? This yolk is running! I'm telling you, I boiled it for six minutes. You did not boil Jesus Christ, Mother! You are the pits of the earth! You are so incompetent! You ought to be made to sit in a pile of puke! Right, that's enough. Go and sit in another room and have your breakfast. I've had enough of this behavior. What did I do? <laughs> Preparations and in Nigeria today, Pope John Paul found himself on the receiving end when he attended a pancake tossing contest. <laughs> Hygiene now, and kitchen workers in the canteen at Windscales nuclear plant have been given a stern warning about leaving the dustbin lids off overnight. <laughs> A couple of years ago, a lot of people in Australia started talking about a remarkable new food. Housewives stopped each other in the street to share the news. Within weeks, supermarket shelves had been stripped bare of it. Well, that food is now available here in Britain. Prime <laughs> the Serengeti Plain, home of the wildebeest. In 1940, 10,000. In 1950, 25,000. In 1960, 80,000. And now, in 1982, a total of two and a half million wildebeest are unemployed. <laughs> and the figure is still rising. Some battle on in search of jobs. Others have lost hope completely. A wildebeest will do almost any type of work. Jeffrey Stevenson is one such example. He has been unemployed for two and a half years. His girlfriend, Mandy Fairfax, likewise, has been out of work for almost 18 months. Both will admit their prospects are low. For Mandy, secretarial work is out of the question as she cannot type and her shorthand is quite appalling. For Geoffrey, simple manual labor is also impossible as he hasn't got hands, only hooves. The same applies to countless others. Next week, we take a hard look at the possibility of a wildebeest job opportunities program. <laughs> and why one particular chain of supermarkets refuses to have wildebeest on its staff.
Olympics has never looked sharper in this shot event. And uh, the knowledge that Uda Bayer, the Olympic champion, has thrown 21 meters 98 this last week has spurred him on. And that's a huge throw again. That's a huge throw, and that's 21 meters surely. And that could well be a new championship record. Brent. That's me, I'm Alan Brent, yes. Could you hold on just a moment, sir? <laughs> um, <coughs> yes, uh, Mr. Brent, we're very glad you've come in. We've been trying to get hold of you all day. Really? I'm afraid I got some very bad news. Oh? Uh -huh. Yes, I'm afraid we had a break-in last night. Well, that is bad news, yes. Yes, it's even worse news for you, I'm afraid. Why? Well, the thieves stole your box. My what? Your box. You know, the little cardboard shoe box that we keep your money in. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, I don't think I follow you. Um... Well, you know, when you make a deposit, mm. we, we put it in a little box, and, and we write your name on it, <laughs> and then we put it out the back, under a big bed we have out there. <laughs> Did you have a safe? Oh, uh, no. No. No, we're only a small branch, you see, so we're saving up for one. <laughs> so... So you can't cash this cheque, then? No. I'm sorry. They just... They just stole my money, then? No, no, they stole Cathy's pen as well, didn't you they, You paper, mate. Mm. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, Kate. <laughs> It seems a shame, really. I had £3,000 in, in my, um, box. Yes. Yes, actually, we at the bank here do feel very sorry for you, Mr Brent. And if it's any consolation, we had a whip round. Oh, yeah. oh, you shouldn't have, really. No, well, <laughs> very nice of you. We would very much like you to take it, if you would. Oh. oh. There we are. There's £8.50 there. There we oh, are, Mr thank, Brent. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Of course, you could. You could open another account with that, no, of course. No, I, I've got, I, think, I think I may have a little box down no, here somewhere no, that no. I can put it. It'd be quite safe this time, because we've had a lock put on the back door. No, see, no, so no, no, no. I'll, um, I'll take it with me, because I have to buy some food for my wife and children. Yes, of course. <laughs> Mr. Brent! <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, it's a joke. <laughs> oh, no. That was a bullet in your leg. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. Oh, oh, no, I don't know how I kept a straight joke. face, it's a joke. box with your name on it, and the thieves came and they, and they took only oh, your box. I, I, I really fell for it, didn't I? <laughs> of course they didn't steal your box. Here it is. <laughs> on pay is meaningless unless it's part of a much wider approach. It must be taken together with restraint on government spending, restraint on government borrowing. I will not change just to court popularity. Now 
they've all had your papers on the management's new offer. 7% with 3% on productivity. And you know that your shop stewards recommend that you join them in rejecting this new offer. So all those, please, who would like to reject the new offer from the company, please raise your hands. Right, well done. And all those in favour of the company's offer, <laughs> now, hang on. All those in favour of the company's offer. Look, wait a minute. There's some confusion here. Please raise your hands if you would like to reject this pathetic offer from the company. Right, good. And all those in favour of the company's offer. <laughs> Look, make up your bloody minds. Look, put that Men, 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 you all know me. me. I'm, I'm Bill Tanner, Tanner from the paint, paint shop. Men, men I, want I want you to raise your hands, all those of you who are willing to accept this derisory offer from the company. Good, good. good. Right, right now, let's show. show. All those of you who are against accepting the offer, raise your hands. <laughs> I'll give you 10 seconds. <laughs> Look, raise your hands. Look, Look, let's simplify this, shall we? Raise your hands, all those who are against being in favour of accepting the rejection of the offer. Most <laughs> <laughs> carried in, we out. Why don't you grow up, you little bastards? What's going on, darling? Nothing, I'm just talking to the plants. <laughs> Just one more, eh, Harry? Just one more job. Look, I'm straight now. All that's behind me. I've got to think of my family. I'd be so ashamed if... It's just one more job, Harry. You don't have to get involved. Nobody will recognise you. Just look upon it as helping out old friends, eh? All you've got to do is drive. <laughs> <laughs> Candidate. Following the tremendous success of the singing telegram, the post office have introduced a new service, the speaking parcel. A policeman on the West Indian island of Windermere, where the Prince and Princess of Wales are holidaying, has single-handedly arrested 12 Daily Star photographers he found lurking on the beach in disguise. <laughs> Later on, we'll be looking at the tragic case of the Romford man who can't meet his mortgage payments and is being forcibly evicted from his Barrett home. One of the worst things about a winter.